All right, so now we're going to move all of our web audio stuff, all of our React state, and all of our functions for interacting with both of them into a React context to sort of extract them away from our presentational logic and make it so that we can easily import it across our entire app. So in here, in SRC, we're going to say new file context slash store.js. In here, we'll say import React from React and const ctx is equal to react.createContext. And this is gonna create our context for us. This we're gonna to need to export like that so that we can import this into our control components in order to access the state variables and in order to send actions that are going to change the state variables and interact with our web audio API. Now we're gonna export a function named reducer and it's going to take two arguments the first is going to be the current state the second argument is going to be an action that we're going to send it in order to update the state and interact with our web audio so in here we're going to have a switch statement and it's going to be based on the action dot type so when the action dot type is start ask for example inside here I'll just leave a comment because we haven't moved our web audio stuff inside here yet but we would have our web audio logic for starting an oscillator here and then every time you have a case, you have to return an object that's going to be the new state. So we have to spread in the current state there and any properties that we're going to update. Like let's say if we had an ask playing, then we would maybe set that to true here. But we're not keeping track of that, so we're just going to return state like that. We also need a default case. And this is going to catch any action that doesn't have a case set up for it. So if that happens, we want to console log reducer error action, and then also log the action there. And even for this one, we also have to return the state like that. So we're gonna export as a default a function named store, and it's gonna take in props because we're gonna use it as a parent component. And in here, we're gonna define the state hook and that's going to be react.useReducer. And the first thing it's going to take is the reducer we defined up here with all of our functions for interacting with our context state and our web audio. And then the second thing is just going to be an object with all of our initial values on it. So this is going to replace this stuff here. So instead of using individual use state hooks for both of these, we're just going to take the values from them, copy them, and each of these will be stored as a property on this object here. So we'll say oscillator one settings, make it an object and paste in those values. Make another property filter settings. It's gonna be an object again. And we're going to grab these values and move those right there. So now we'll return ctx.provider and this is going to be the parent component that we're going to wrap our entire app with over in index.js. Right here, this will be props.children. So we will pass that right there. And we need to pass it our state hook as the value so that it has access to our context. So also, we're missing the filter and oscillator one, obviously, because all of our web audio stuff is still inside of app.js so let's copy all of that and we'll go up to the top of our store.js file and right beneath our react import we're just going to paste that all in there. Now to wrap our app with this we're going to go into index.js and import it so we'll import the store from dot slash context slash store and then we're just going to wrap app with it like this. So now app is going to be the props.children right here, getting wrapped by our CTX provider with the state hook as its value, which gives it access to this reducer and all of our state. So now anywhere in our app, we can hook into this and access our state values and also send actions that'll update those state values and also interact with our web audio API. Also, since we've added our web audio logic up here, now we can change this comment to actual web audio logic and say oscillator1.start.
To hook up our control components, all we have to do is go into them and we'll import from React the use context hook and we'll import our CTX from context slash store. Now up at the top of our component, we're going to say const and then make an array. The first thing will be app state, second thing will be update state and we are getting those out of using the CTX context. So app state is going to give us all of the state values that are currently in our state. Update state is what we're going to use to send those actions to update our state and to interact with the web audio API. So now instead of grabbing our type frequency and detune out of a settings prop, we're going to just delete the prop and we'll say app state dot oscillator one and then capital S settings. So now we're grabbing it out of our app state right here. So now instead of getting change up here as a prop, we're going to come down here and just define it inside of this component. We're going to say const change. It's going to get one argument E for event. We're going to again destructure the value and the ID off of E dot target. And then we're going to call update state. And here we're going to pass an object. It's going to have a type for right now. We'll say change ask one and then it'll have a payload and here we're going to pass the ID and the value that we're getting off of e.target. Now since we're defining change here we can delete it up there out of our props. So now we're going to make another case in our reducer and this one's going to be change ask one because it's going to match the type of the action that we're sending. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to destructure the ID and the value off of the action.payload there. So we'll say let ID and value equal action dot payload. And then we're going to use these two values to update first our web audio and then our react context state. So first the web audio, we're going to take oscillator one and then whatever audio param on it has a key that matches what we're getting for ID. We're going to set its dot value to the value that we're getting from action dot payload. Now we're going to do the react state, so we'll return an object. We're going to spread in all of the current state, and what we're going to overwrite is oscillator one settings. But since we're only overwriting one value on oscillator one settings, we've got to spread in all of the current oscillator one settings in our state. And then we're just going to overwrite the one that has a key of whatever we're getting for the ID value, and we're going to overwrite its value with the value we're getting from action.payload. Now back in our ask1.js, we're going to make another function to replace the change type prop this time. So const change type is equal to e, and then we're going to just destructure id off of this one, off of e.target, and then we're going to do update state with a type of change ask1 type, and then the payload will just be the ID. And since we've now defined this here, we can delete it from the props up there. So now we're going to take this destructuring right here and we're going to move it to the top of our reducer so that we can use those values in all of our different cases. And what we're going to do is create a new case. It's going to be change ask one type. Because again, we're just matching what we're putting here on the type for the action. And then we're going to destructure this ID off of it up here at the top and we'll use that to say oscillator one dot type is now equal to the value we're getting for ID. And for the react context state, we're going to return our object, spread in the current state, change oscillator one settings, but only one value on it. So we got to spread in the current values we have for oscillator one settings in our state. And then we're going to change the type. We're going to overwrite it with the value of ID. Back here in ask1.js, we're going to save, and now we're going to open up our filter and pretty much do the same thing here. So first we'll import our use context from React, import ctx from dot dot slash context slash store. Up at the top of our component, we're going to say const app state update state equals use context ctx.
Now we have our context. Now instead of destructuring these values here off of a settings prop, we're going to destructure them off of our app state dot filter capital S settings. So again, we're going to replace change and change type with functions. They're going to take E for event. We're going to destructure ID and value off of the E dot target. And we're going to update our state. We're going to pass it an action with a type of change filter. And it's going to have a payload that's going to be an object with ID and value on there. And again, for change type, we're also going to get E. We're going to destructure just the ID this time off of the E dot target. And we're going to update state with an action that has a type of change filter type. The payload is just going to have an object with the ID value on it. Now that we've replaced all of our props, we can just delete this here, save that. So back in our reducer, we're going to create some more cases. The first one's going to be change filter. And here we just need to go on filter, grab the audio param that has a key matching the value we're getting for ID, and we're going to set its dot value to the value that we're destructuring off of the action.payload. For our React context state, we're going to return an object, spread in our current state. We're going to be overwriting the filter settings. But since we're only overwriting one value on there, we need to spread in all the others first with state.filter settings. And then we're just going to replace the one with a key that matches what we're getting for ID. And we're going to overwrite it with the value we're destructuring off of the action.payload. Now we can go delete a ton of stuff in app.js because we just replaced it. So there's our audio stuff, our use state hooks, and here's our functions for interacting with our web audio and our use state hooks. And then we can also delete these props because we're not using those in our control components anymore. And then these things right here, these buttons, we're just going to move those into our oscillator one control. Also, we can go ahead and delete the use state import now because we're not using that in our app.js. So in ask1.js, we're going to put those buttons. We're going to remove that class name on the div that they're in. We're going to replace this ask1.start with an update state. We're going to pass it an action that just has a type of start ask. Down here, we're going to replace this one with update state, pass it an action of type stop ask. Now, neither of these have payloads on them. So that's going to give us some problems here where we're trying to destructure some values off of the action.payload. So if it's not defined, then we'll just set a default here of an empty object for it to try to destructure things off of so that we will avoid getting errors for trying to access properties on something that is undefined. Now we just need to make a case to stop the oscillator. So it'll be stop ask and it's going to say ask1.stop and then it's just going to return the state as it is. And down here, our default actually needs to be written like that. So now our app is going to function the exact same way, except for our React state and our web audio logic has all been moved into a React context, which can be easily shared across our entire app and imported into any of our control components. That's about enough of that. Up next, we're going to use the QWERTY Hancock library to build a virtual keyboard. And instead of having a single oscillator that we turn on and off with buttons, we're going to make a new oscillator every time someone plays a note on our keyboard.